Hey, in today's video, let's create a quick little pumpkin. So for that, I pulled up this uh, reference that I think is pretty great for like a classical uh, pumpkin. Uh, to get started, I'm gonna go to Lightbox and just grab this 128 uh, Dynamesh and you can see that right there. Let's jump out of the perspective uh, view. And the first thing I wanna do is I want to create the uh, lines on the pumpkin. But before I do that, you know what I'm thinking of this, let's change this to 256. So we'll double this up a little and uh, keep an eye on your points. I'm gonna control and drag. So now it's gonna give me about 173,000 points, which should be more than enough. To create these lines, all we need to do is just grab Damien standard. And if you start dragging on the surface, you should see what that looks like. It should be something along these lines. I'm gonna undo that. And I do have my lazy mouse on, and I also have my lazy snap on. So both of these are on, and that's going to help me uh, pick up where I left off with my dragging point and just kind of continue dragging, right? So that's the point of uh, lazy snap. If you want to see this UI or use this UI, uh, you can download it in my community tab. Um, all of the my UI and uh, all of the brushes that I use, even the external ones are uh, all there if you would like to download that. So uh, to continue uh, to create all the lines um, at the same time, we just have to turn on active symmetry and then turn on our uh, radial button. And let's go to Y. Instead of eight, I would like to do a lot more. Let's do maybe 14. I think the spacing of that should be a little bit closer to what I'm seeing here. Now I'm just gonna go from the top here, hold on the shift key, uh, make a line, and then just release the shift. And that's going to automatically create uh, a line going um, from the top to the bottom. And that's, as you can see, is very similar to uh, our reference as far as the pumpkin goes, right? We can, of course, clean this up and redynamesh, so we're not going to worry about some of this not being uh, perfect. We can even do that now, um, but before we do, let's inflate these sides just a little bit to create a little more of a organic wobble. We can do a couple things. We can go to, um, let's go to masking. So masking is right here. And if I click on, uh, let's see, mask by cavity, 100 to mask by cavity, it's gonna do something like this, which is great. Now I can do control and click to reverse the mask. I can do control and click to uh, smooth the mask. And now I can just simply inflate this a little more if I want to, right? That's gonna be pretty cool. If you wanted to, you can also grab something like the inflate brush and we still have the radial symmetry turned on. So you can literally play with this and make it more wobbly if you want or less wobbly, whatever you want. If you wanna create like a little um, you know, inflation here, you can do that. Uh, very quickly, it's gonna create something that looks very organic and almost, you know, as you see in here, it's kind of a wobbly and not straight. You can see that we're starting to really mess up our uh, initial sphere, right? We can also do, let's do control and drag, and then let's do control and drag again to re-dynamesh this, and then we can polish this a little. You can decide if you want more resolution or not. Um, for now, this is fine. I can always clean this up as we keep going. If you wanna change the shape of this, you can also use something called deformation. You can go to in there. And in here, there's something called, uh, we can obviously inflate this. So that's an option, right? Let's inflate this a little more, and that's gonna actually clean up some of our lines. And uh, we can also try something called uh, gravity. And mine is turned to Y, which means I can kind of change the shape of my pumpkin. Maybe I want it to be a little more like this instead of, you know, sort of, instead of perfectly round, I have kind of a more of a, more of a shape here that I kind of like. That's pretty cool. Um, at this point, let's go ahead and decide what we want to do next. Uh, to create this little thing on top, how do we do that? All we need to do is just simply, let's go ahead and insert, uh, we'll go to our sub tools and let's just insert a cylinder. And that should uh, work perfectly. I'm gonna go to my move, scale this down. Let's put it into position. And let's just decide on, I'm looking here on the thickness of this, maybe something along these lines, maybe make it just a little bit longer and of course I want to also 
um, turn it into Dynamesh, right? So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do 256 and let's just do Dynamesh, control and drag. And that's gonna give us, you know, something like this. I can polish this to round this up. And to add these uh, beautiful lines here, let's do the same thing. I'm just gonna grab uh, the Damien standard. I'm gonna activate my um, uh, radial symmetry on Y, right? And now I can just very quickly create something that uh, I like as far as the lines and it's very close to what I'm seeing here to add this uh, bottom detail there all we need to do is just grab the move brush and again still radio is activated I can just start pulling on this make my brush a little bit smaller and just literally just start pulling this out and I'm just trying to recreate something very similar to what I'm seeing uh, right here right so something like that is pretty cool. Um, you can see that there's also some awesomeness on top. Before we create this bend, let's just maybe mess this up a little bit here too. Uh, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller and just kind of make it a little more organic looking, right? We can even really mess this up by moving this around. We can even create like a little bit of a wobble, why not, right? Because this is organic, it's supposed to be organic. We can even create like a little flare. I think that's great. Something like that. If I wanted to bend that really quick, I can of course just go to uh, move, go into uh, gear, and let's do a bend curve. And in here, um, we can just, right now it's set to three. Let me press X to turn off my um, symmetry. But uh, right here I can change the resolution, right? So let me give me, uh, I'm gonna give myself three points. And if I start dragging this, uh, you can see that it's not moving the bottom here. And the reason for that is because my symmetry is off. You can see symmetrical equals zero. So make sure that this green one on the bottom is set to zero, right? Because you don't want to mess with this one. You just want the top one. So that's going to be great. We can add more resolution and just kind of mimicking my reference here and just start creating a little bit of a curve or a bend. And there's no right or wrong ways of doing this. This is just a preference of what you like, or you know, if you want to add more curves, you could do that, or less, whatever you want. So let's say I like this, that's fine. I'm gonna go to gear and say accept, and now I have something along these lines. So very quickly, we created something that looks a lot like a pumpkin. All right, if we wanna adjust this, let's do Alt and click to select our mesh, and I'm gonna press X to turn off my uh, symmetry. Hold on the Control key, I'm just gonna mask this part out, do something like this and just make it somewhat messy, you know, some, something a little more organic. I'm gonna do control and click and now I can just deflate this in, push this in maybe and do something like this. Uh, let me do uh, control and drag to get rid of the mask. Let's mask this one more time and just do something again, somewhat random and blobby control click to reverse it and this time I'm gonna uh, inflate this up and just create something that looks a lot like the bottom of the pumpkin right uh, very cool so now we have the bottom is done the top is done and now we have this beautiful pumpkin that we can start if we want to uh, carving right so in uh, our next video let's go ahead and carve this and maybe hollow this out and do something uh, super fun but I just wanted to show you how quickly you can create a pumpkin here in um, ZBrush. And of course, uh, let's do this. Let's uh, grab our move brush, make it kind of large, press X. And what I can do now is I'm looking at this reference. I can make this a little bit larger. You can very easily change this uh, shapes to whatever you like by just using move and a large brush. And you can just have a lot of fun with this, right? It could literally be anything. If you wanted to color this really quick and bring it into uh, Blender for some nice uh, rendering, we can of course do that. Let's go ahead and make sure our layer is selected. I'm gonna go uh, into my standard brush and I'm gonna switch this to RGB only, right? I wanna color it at 100%. Let's pick this really nice, beautiful orange, kind of a red orange. I think that's perfect. Let's do a fill object uh, on that. And if you wanted to add some uh, painting to this, 
could use masking like we uh, have been doing with our witch videos hopefully you watch some of those if I go to masking uh, let's jump into cavity and I'm gonna dial this up to 100 or I guess we could do maybe 80 and let's do mask by cavity and that's gonna give us a really nice selection uh, kind of automatically right uh, all of these inside could be a little bit darker orange. Let's choose a darker orange for the for the inside of the pumpkin, something like this. And I'm just going to do fill object. Do control and drag, and now you can see what that looks like. Uh, it looks, you know, much darker, right? If I wanted to blend this and pump some color through it, I can make it maybe somewhat more red. Turn this down to maybe 10% and start pumping uh, a color, a red color, at 10% throughout the whole object, the dark and the light orange, right? So if I start doing that, you can see what it's gonna do. It's gonna start blending it together and give me something really uh, awesome, right? Can also do a couple highlights really quick. Uh, let's just do maybe like a, I'm seeing here kind of a yellowish color. So I'm gonna do something like that. Make this a little bit larger. Let's d jump out of Dynamesh so we don't mess this up. And um, let's just simply, Turn this back up. Let's turn this up to maybe uh, 40, make this a little bit smaller. And we can add a little uh, additional color to this. We can, of course, make it even brighter and do something like that, right? So it has some kind of a variation in the color. Just a little bit, I think that's pretty cool. Um, I do see that the material is nice and shiny. Let's change our material here in ZBrush. Uh, we can choose this. Uh, we can choose the soft plastic one and it looks like it has a little more, uh, you know, reflection to it. You can see what that looks like. Uh, this right here, if we wanted to color that, we can go to Subtools. Let's select that. And it's kind of a greenish or down, brown greenish color. So I'll, I'll do the same thing. Uh, let's find our green, like a yellowish green, I guess. And just try to simple, create kind of a, a similar situation here. So I'll do this and I'll do fill object at 100%. And same thing, let's just create our automatic uh, selection here using masking. So I'm gonna go to masking. All right, and here, uh, let's check this out. Let's, if I zoom in, um, I can see uh, what that looks like. And let's say I want to have a little more res on this, right? Um, at 256, if I do control and drag, you can see that I don't really have enough because this is somewhat smaller piece. So let me switch this to 512. Just give me a little more geometry and do control and drag and now it's a little bit better, right? I can do a little polish and now it just looks like I have more uh, information here, right? So now uh, if I wanted to mask this, uh, I can do, let's do peaks and valleys. We'll do 56 and we'll do something like that. Do control and drag to reverse it. Maybe do like a lighter green and do a fill object. And now I have something that looks, you know, very organic and kind of uh, uh, beautiful, right? Especially if you zoom out, it looks pretty awesome, I think. And I did this really, really quickly. Uh, we can do the same thing in the bottom too, right? If you want to maybe color this piece here the same way. Let's do uh, Alt and click on our pumpkin. Uh, I'm going to press X to turn off my uh, symmetry, make my brush just a little bit smaller and just literally just paint this. Uh, like an old school painting. Just do that. Maybe make this a little bit darker. And then uh, let's paint the middle a little bit darker and just kind of messy, right? All right, so I think that looks pretty good. We can uh, mess this up a little more, but I think uh, I like my pumpkin. And of course, the more time you spend on this, the better it's going to look. If I wanted to uh, press this down, I can see the top part is actually pressed down a little bit. Let's just literally just press this down and create something uh, something like this and maybe even do something like that right so you have this kind of really nice curve that I'm seeing there and of course again I can adjust this uh, as I wish and now I have this really cool uh, curve going on right inside and uh, uh, last thing I could do is grab my uh, stem here and just put it back into place and uh, very quickly we created something that looks a lot like our reference and uh looks pretty cool right all right so i hope you enjoyed this video and maybe you also made a cool uh quick little pumpkin i'm gonna do a quick bpr and one thing that i always like to do is i like to go to uh, render 
And if you go to shadows, you can control the shadows, maybe uh, make this just a little bit less strong. Um, and then I like to go to filters personally and go uh, turn on the this F3 with the sharpen and just pump this up. And I think that's gonna give me a nice quick uh, render for you guys. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in our next video.